Hello there, I'm Theo and this is my loudest. Welcome and thank you so so much for clicking on this video. Now that you're here, please watch it all the way to the end. A very big shout out to everybody who has subscribed to my channel so far, everybody who likes my videos, everybody who comments and everybody who recommends my content to other people. Thank you so so much in the Luanga month and I appreciate you. If you haven't subscribed, please do click on the subscribe button and put the notification bell on so you know every time I put up a video and yeah i am doing another radiography video and today i will be answering i'll be answering most of the questions that i have been getting related to um the application and the securing of a training practice and everything else in between and um yeah please also note that um most of these that i'll be giving you will be in terms of radiography um, uh, the University of Johannesburg um, how UJ requires you to apply and what is expected of you and all the little things in between without wasting any more time um, I'll just get into the questions I got quite a lot I didn't get to read all of them but uh, most of them were actually a repeated a repetition of each other so I'm just gonna cover most of the questions in one right um so the first question i got was um when do i start applying for a hospital so for those that do not know um uj requires you to get a training practice for yourself so as throughout your studies you will be doing um your theory in class and then you also have to go and do your practical in an actual hospital so you have to secure a hospital for yourself you have to look for that hospital and um just in passing uj has specific hospitals that they work with they don't work with every hospital so they will send you a list as soon as they send you that um, letter that you have been conditionally accepted they will also send you a list of hospitals that you can apply uh, at so when do you start applying you start as soon as you get that letter or that list so um i can't really give you a specific date or say apply before june or whatever because i think there's like about 20 or so hospitals on that list and every hospital has its own um how do i put it every hospital has its own ways of doing things every hospital has its own requirements its own ways of applying their own closing dates and opening dates and so forth so what i would advise you to do is as soon as you get that letter that list of hospital apply to whichever hospital you want to train at and or rather call them or send an email to find out when is when are they opening for applications for training students and also require from inquire from them what documents they require you know um i could tell you right now and say uh, apply in july only to find that they close their application um in june not to say that is how it happens it's usually towards the end of the year but as the sooner you start the better so um as soon as you get that list start applying and secure that um, hospital and um, the second one says which hospital can i apply at it seems a lot of people are actually confused about this hospital situation but um you can honestly apply at any hospital of your choice um from that list you've got private hospitals and you have um public hospitals so they both have their pros and their cons in terms of um what you get from each they both train their students pretty good but um i mean a private and a public hospital will always be different so which hospital you apply at is really up to you but i would recommend that you apply um to as many hospitals on that list because some hospitals only take two students a year so if you're only going to apply at one hospital and you have like seven other students you're competing with your chances are very slim so apply to as many if not all of the hospitals on that list this one says i just wanted to 
Oh, I just wanted you to share some of the bursaries that cover radiography. I am not 100% sure about which hospital, I mean, which bursaries cover radiography, but I am certain that the Department of Health bursaries does cover radiography. So, um, Gauteng Department of Health, literally, actually, every um, province has its own Department of Health and every department has bursaries so they offer different amounts from each um, province but all those bursaries do um, provide do cater rather for radiography um, one of the next questions was yes here let me just fuse this question this question with with this one that says is it advisable to choose a public or a private hospital as a student and this will take us also back to the other question that i was saying not long ago that um th they these are different on their own but if you're choosing a private hospital um most of them will tell you that okay we will pay for your studies considering that as soon as you're done with school you come back and you work for us for the number of years that we have paid your fees so in cases of studying at uj it is a four-year course um so if they're going to be paying for you throughout the four years when you're done with your degree you have to serve them back that four years or you can pay them back their money I don't really know how much it is and I do know people who left private hospitals to go and work in public hospitals after completing and they had to pay back um, the money that they were sponsored but if you're going to be working in a public hospital you are eligible to apply for the Department of Health bursary and the Department of Health covers everything but they give you a fixed amount of money so of, out of that money it is up to you how you utilize it you can pay for your fees your books and get an um grocery allowance and also for raise if you want to stay in raise but you it, you have to make sure that however much your expenses are they are not over what your bursary provides and um just to get into a little bit of detail um regarding which hospital to apply at um like i said a private and a public hospital are different in the sense that um most um private hospitals only take a few students right and public hospitals will take as many as um 20 students in first year as an example when i was in first year i think our group had 17 or 15 around there but it's a lot of students they take and there's a about five or seven public hospitals so if it's those many students that each hospital takes then there's a great chance of you securing a spot in a public hospital but you should also consider things like um, if you're choosing a public hospital, is it an academic hospital? In academic hospitals, um, they usually have all disciplines or rather all modalities in radiography. If you haven't watched my other video, um, I think I'll put the link here. There's a, the, the, there was a part where I was explaining that radiography has different branches. You have your um, normal x-rays and then you have different kinds of scans and you have um okay well basically they're all scans but you know it's different kinds you know you've got your NGO, you have your cath lab you have um ct you have mri it's not important for you to know all of that right now but if you're choosing a public academic hospital um nine and a half times out of ten that hospital will have all of those modalities so you as their student will have first-hand privilege of training in all of that and um some private hospitals do have all the modalities however some don't because this equipment is very very expensive so you do get um students from 
private hospitals coming to the government hospitals to observe modalities that they don't have in their hospitals so just be mindful of that that um, also the experience you get is a little different in terms of in private hospitals they um, also um, what is that word prioritize you know like doing special views I don't know an easier way to explain this but just say for example a patient is coming for a hand x-ray right in a private hospital they would do like five x-rays of the hand that's an example whereas in a public hospital we'll just do two you know as long as you can see the problem or whether there's no problem two is enough right so the the difference is in a public hospital you will do minimal views of the same thing whereas in public in private you will do a lot of views for the same part i hope that makes sense so they do a lot of specialized um technical views i'm trying to be as simple as possible and um another thing is that in public hospital you have everybody coming to that hospital from the guy that sleeps under the bridge to the politicians actors a regular lady from next door in a public hospital you have the privilege of seeing literally all sorts of patients and all sorts of trauma everything you can think of you get the privilege to see that in a public hospital but at the end of the day it is up to you with what you are comfortable um working in where you are comfortable working at rather and um the next question says um i wanted to find out if it's possible that you invite someone who did diagnostic ultrasound okay um yeah i think she means that i like you know have somebody definitely i'm working on that it's just that there isn't a lot of um um sonographers who did um the four-year degree course because i want i didn't want to like you know call somebody who qualified like 10 years ago to come and talk to us because i wanted it to be as relatable as possible but i am working on getting somebody who qualified recently and is a um sonographer to come and talk to us about diagnostic um, ultrasound and that is underway it is coming really 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 soon that i promise um and the next question says i just wanted to find out what does it mean when you got the email from uj that says okay this question is not complete um i'm just i'm hoping that i can find the whole sms the whole message because no so i was asking these questions i ask people to send me questions on instagram and you know how it limits the number of questions you can i mean the characters in each response but i'd like to believe you wanted to know what it means if you got an email that says you've been conditionally accepted so what it means is that either conditionally accepted or provincially accepted it both means the same thing what it means that is that you meet the minimum requirements for the course and uj is considering you but you have to maintain the same standard of results you got. So if you apply with the metric results um, and your average was, let's just say 60%, they're expecting you to maintain that 60% or, you know, beat that. So you are um, accepted con um, considering that. Or rather not all. It also means that you're accepted as long as you maintain that um grade and you also secure a, pre a training center i will say this over and over that uj will not accept you unless you have a training center because while you study you have to do your practical so even if you are you um your marks are really good after grade 12 if you don't have a training center unfortunately they will not take you um this one says um how difficult is it getting placement and how many hospitals would you advise one to apply so um getting a placement in a hospital is not really that difficult like i said with public hospitals they can take as many students as they can afford 
um, what I can advise you to do is to apply to if not all the hospitals on the list to majority of them so that if you fail the side you have a plan B that side and you prepare you know they're gonna call you for interviews so just go there prepared I did do a video on um, questions that they might ask you at your interview you're more than welcome to go and watch that and I've gotten a lot of positive feedback from people who went for their interviews and they use those questions so trust me you won't regret it do watch that video and prepare for your interviews um, with the help of the video um, this one says how do I apply to training centers okay so the application process is different per hospital. I would advise you to call because the list you get from UJ for the, of the, um, the list of hospitals, it's got the email address and it also has phone numbers of the people you can talk to in that particular hospital. So I'd advise you to email them or give them a call to find out what is their preferred method of application. Some will tell you, no, just send me an email with your um, ID your CV and your metric results and that will be enough or in a motivational letter and that will be enough for you to um, apply and then some of them will say we need you to come through so we can also do like a physical screening or whatever the case so it is really different in how you apply I would suggest you give the hospital you're interested in a call and find out their people my painting just fell right on camera okay <laughs> gosh that scared me okay okay let us continue as pelumoy gosh that scared me my armpits are even itchy <laughs> Okay, um, what was I even saying? Ugh. You ruined my video. Yeah, just call the hospital and ask them for their preferred method of application. Um, this one says, um, do you think that taking a diploma path and then a degree is worth it? At this point, I don't think a, a diploma will be worth it because um, the department is phasing out, the Department of Health is phasing out the diploma qualification. So everybody who currently has a diploma is working on getting a BTEC, which is equivalent to a um, bachelor's degree. Please note this is in South Africa. So if you're asking from outside, I'm not really sure how other countries are doing it, but in South Africa, a diploma is currently being phased out and most universities are now only doing a, a degree. Um, I know UJ is doing a degree with an NQF level of the same equivalence with an honors degree so if you are doing it with uj i don't know if smu is also doing the same thing because i currently found out that they're also doing they're offering a four-year degree because previously it used to be three years but now it's four years so i don't know if they're also giving a honors level of a degree or if it's still a bachelor's degree but i would advise you to just go straight to a to a degree and not a bachelor's de um, a diploma because if you're doing a diploma first it means literally right after you qualify you would have to go back and get a btec and i doubt there's still any institution that still offers a diploma um if you have any information on radiography at smu please help me out i want to choose one um okay as far as I know with SMU, the difference between SMU and UJ is that you don't have to do the whole application process for a training center, blah, 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 blah. But everything else is more or less the same. And right now, since they're also doing a four year degree, I think things are more or less at the same level, um, qualification wise. And the nicest thing about it is that you don't have to stress about securing a place to do your practical.
however they take a limited number of students i think it's like 30 or so a year compared to uj that takes like 90 something students so um you can just dm me uh with like the specific information you'd like to know about smu because i'm not really sure what information you would like to know but um, at the end of the day the qualification is the same we get to do, to do the same job whether you qualified in dut smu uj um, cput or tut it doesn't matter um this one says so if you've applied with grade 12 results and you get clinical placement do you stand a good chance of being admitted definitely if your results are good and you do have a clinical placing there's a very great chance of you being admitted because the one thing that stands in the way of people being fully admitted is that they do not have a training center so if you um, secure that you're good to go um this one says do you think diagnostic radiographers are high in demand in sa <sighs> okay i am gonna be quite honest that okay this is we are in 2022 and honestly there are posts that are coming out for diagnostic radiographers but it isn't a lot of posts so i wouldn't say radiographers are in demand because as it stands universities are producing a whole lot of radiographers and there isn't enough room in the market for all of them so let's give you an example that uj is producing let's say 70 radiographers at the end of the year and then at the end of the four year degree and then you have um, SMU, which is producing their 30, UP also with their 30, DUT, TUT, um, K Peninsula. You know, there's so many universities that offer radiography, and each year they have graduates. Those graduates are coming into the platform, they're coming into the market, they are looking for jobs. And then um, both the public and the private sector are only creating jobs for, like, let's say, 30 people we have like 300 400 graduates and there's only 40 posts do you know what i mean do you get the idea so i wouldn't say that radiographers are really in demand there is quite a lot and unfortunately old radiographers are not retiring either so we just have to be fighting for spots with them but i'm not saying there isn't employment i'm just saying that we should just be wise about it you know um yeah that's all i can say and also employment also depends on whether it's in a public in a um rural or in an urban area and sometimes people are not getting jobs because the jobs are situated in places they're not comfortable relocating to you might want to consider that radiography is a little oversaturated so yeah just be a little bit wise there um is it hard to get a job after doing comserve not really hard but like i just said now that there is a lot of radiographers graduating from school coming into the market so that is sort of minimizing chances of easily getting um a job but it's not difficult 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 to a point where you could say i stayed six months or five months without a job jobs are there it also comes back to are people willing to relocate to places with the employment um sonography or radiography i would suggest, i would advise you to do sonography because um there is a little bit of a demand right now for sonographers that's one two you have room for growth as a sonographer you know you can be an independent person in the sense that you don't necessarily need to be in a hospital i hope it makes sense so definitely sonography hey um which hospital from the list given by the university do you recommend guys i am going to be very biased about this i trained in charlotte mcclake and i want 
I got the best training ever. Like I enjoyed being in that hospital. I enjoyed being a student there. So I would definitely recommend Shalit Masake. And um, which other hospital? I don't know. I, I've never been in any other hospital and I have heard students complain about other hospitals, but obviously every student was complaining. Even in Simja, we were complaining, but out of everything in general, the bottom line is I enjoyed Simja. I enjoyed being in Shalat Matake. So we call it Simja, but it's um, Shalat Matake Johannesburg Academic Hospital. That was home for me. I loved it there. Um, does scoring a hospital placement guarantee the university to fully accept you? Not necessarily. Um, getting placement is just one of those things you need in order to be placed. But having one does not guarantee that you will be accepted. So, yeah. Um, am I able to use my previous degree to apply for radiography? Yes, you can. Uh, you don't necessarily have to um be fresh from high school or be fresh from i don't know but you could have studied something else before and then you want to come into radiography you are more than welcome to do that i just don't really know what they consider when they are um looking at your of uh, application if maybe they look at your average from your from your previous degree or what but you can definitely apply we did have classmates who had other degrees when they came into radiography so you are more than welcome to apply with your previous degree um when do i do my observation you do your observation as soon as possible um but you just, after you have sent it, after you have sent your application, UJ will respond and tell you we have received your application, blah 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 blah. We require you to go and observe and I think now it's twenty four hours that you have to observe, which is three days. I'm not really sure. And then um, you go and you observe as soon as you get that. What I would advise you guys to do is Please observe in a private and a public hospital. It will also help you in terms of choosing the hospital to train at. When I went to observe, that was just out of curiosity and um, I don't know, I just wanted to do it. I observed in a public hospital first, then I went to a private hospital and then I went to an academic public hospital so i went to observe in three hospitals and i i had a a clear vision of what to expect when i get into radiography and also what to look for when i apply for a training center because word of mouth sometimes is not enough like right now i'm telling you i started i did my training in simja and somebody's probably thinking yeah simja it is sometimes you also have to go out there and do the work yourself Okay, um, I think this is one of the last few questions. What does the buzzery cover? Um, the buzzery covers everything, but I, like I said, they give you a fixed amount and it's up to you how to use it. So they will not say, tell us how much everything costs and we'll give you that money. If they say, okay, we're going to give you 200 rands. Out of that 200 rands, you it's up to you that you choose what you cover with it. Will you cover your school, I mean your tuition fee, your, your textbooks um, and rents? Or are you going to sacrifice textbooks for um, monthly groceries? Are you going to sacrifice this? It's up to you literally how you play it around. And if the money they're giving you is enough to cover everything, then why not? You know, it's really up to you. And then um, another question says, do I have to write a motivational letter? And if so, what must I include? Um, some hospitals, when you apply, they will require you to have a motivational letter on why you would want, why they should take you, basically. So in, a, in that motivational letter, you're just selling yourself to the employer. You are telling them what you will be bringing to the table. You are telling them why they should basically choose you um what you include is um 
basically everything you sell in yourself um the questions they were asking the questions i gave in the interview video in the video i did about um interviews the answers you give to that is what you should put in your motivational letter first you will have your introduction on good day this is your daughter marie i am an applicant at uj and i would like um rather and as required i'm required to uh, secure a training center and i would like to train in your in your practice this is my motivation letter i completed my metric in 2015 and i am currently doing one two three or oh, i'm currently in metric and i have been provisionally accepted at uj to start studying in 2024 2023 um yeah i'm a fast ender i'm a hard working blah 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 i chose to practice in this hospital because According to my research, it's got all the modalities in radiography, so that would allow me to learn quicker or it is closer to um, campus, so I would be comfortable. Just pour out yourself in that letter and just sell sell yourself. Give them reasons why they should choose you. Uh, you know, I believe I would be a good candidate or a good student in your student. Ooh, students. I'd be a good student in your institution because blah 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 blah. You know, just give them reasons to like you and love you. And um, I think this that was the last question. Let me just double check. Um, yeah, the the rest are just um, repeating themselves. Like, how do I apply for a training center? When do I observe again? so um yeah if maybe you still do have other questions that i probably did not cover in this video do um let me know but i believe i have covered most of the questions that i was getting dms about but most of them were about training centers on how do i um apply for a training center and what should i say and things like that oh and also there was a confusion between observation and application basically for training so guys when you want to observe you don't have to apply for observation you don't have to send in anything you can just maybe call them to set an appointment or request to go and observe like you know hi i would like to come and observe blah 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 or you can just simply walk in it's not a problem observations are really not that hectic um another thing that people were confused was do i have to observe on the hospitals that were on the list because some people were saying no i'm in Limpopo, so i cannot go and observe in the hospitals in Joburg. no you can observe literally anywhere in south africa as long as there's a um radiography department you can observe and provide proof of observation the hospitals in that list are only for training when you have been you know accepted that's where you will be going to do your practicals the observing you can observe anywhere even if it's a small clinic with just a small um radiography department it's acceptable but I wouldn't advise that you go and observe in a small clinic unless you really don't have a choice and you are in an environment that doesn't have bigger hospitals. But I would advise you go and apply and observe in a bigger institution so that you have a fuller idea of what to expect in radiography. And um, also, you know, in, in clinics, we don't really have, the, the isn't, they don't have wards, they don't have um, theater, they don't have, um specialized modalities so you only see general x-rays and that is just literally a tiny little bit of radiography out of the bigger spectrum so do observe in a bigger hospital if you can but if you can't it's also very understandable um what else you don't want to say yeah so please don't be confused observations and application for training are completely different things the list you get from uj is for you to apply for training for the year that you start studying observing you observe anywhere 
um, just make sure that when UJ requires proof, you have the proof. And um, yeah, I think this is all. If you do have any questions, again, I repeat, don't. You can just leave them down below or DM me or yeah, however way. I would prefer that you comment your questions down below so that if there's somebody else who might have information can help you, or if somebody is experiencing what you're experiencing, then my response to your question can help the next person also. But yeah, until I see you again, please don't forget to take care, share the love. And if you have not subscribed, please do subscribe. Give this video a very big thumbs up because I know, I know, I know you liked it. And don't forget to drop your comments down below. And if there's anything, I'll definitely come back with more radiography videos. Until I see you again, continue to take care and share the love. Bye.